Hey, welcome to Pro Tips, where you put more into and get more out of serving in Kids Club. Today's topic, how to use coping tools or fidgets. Maybe you think this is a little controversial, but hear me out. A lot of people learn best when they're moving. I know I do. I run while listening to podcasts. I doodle during important meetings, whatever this is. The point is having something to do with your hands can help you and a lot of other people around you stay more focused. So here's the big idea. Fidgets are tools, not toys. And fish are our friends, not food. Think of a time when kids might have wanted to take Legos into large group. Or in small group, they got restless and just started tapping their marker on their neighbor's shoulder. Or they were squirming so much, it looked like they couldn't possibly be paying attention, but then later, they recited the whole story word for word. That's legit, it happens. It could be that those kids just needed to be moving or fidgeting with something in order to pay attention, but because they lacked the tools to do so, they turned to other things in the room. And a good fidget can be a good tool. So what do we do about it? Tip number one, use what's already in the room. Now kids might try to bring toys from home, but those can get lost easily on the weekends and also some of them, like fidget spinners that light up in the dark, can be even more distracting. So to equip you and kids, we're gonna stock our drawers and cabinets with different fidgeting options, like fidget cubes, Floam, sensory discs, and even the good old bean bag. These are all quiet, non-distracting options. And they're already in the room. Tip number two, keep it on the DL. The whole idea here is to help kids increase focus, not decrease it. So if you think a kid or two kids might need a coping tool, instead of making a big announcement, making a big deal, take them aside quietly and talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. You'll also avoid the run on the bank type situation. Tip three, set clear expectations. We've talked about this before, but kids thrive with expectations. So just be upfront and clear about what fidget tool they're allowed to use and for how long and what are okay and not so okay ways to use it. Oh, and that we need them back. Cause we want kids to be able to have these tools no matter what service they go to, right? And we want every kid to be able to experience God and grow in their faith while they're here. That's a good goal. And a good fidget can be a good tool to make that happen. By using what's already in the room, keeping it discreet and setting clear expectations, you're helping every kid to stay focused. Keep up the good work and thanks for watching Pro Tips.